here. We have 12 people. Okay, ready. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. Right, so you will see an option to to, to rank uh, who whose fault is this, right? So remember the problem we have at hand, which is that Anna is a new recruit. We gave her a task to do and she didn't do it very well. Because of that, we lost a big customer, 10% of the income of the company. Uh, so you can, you can go and try to answer this question, whose fault Whose fault is, is this? Right, so I see, I see very good. So I see a few. So two people think it's Anna's. Anna's, Anna's boss is, uh, okay, interesting. Interesting, so try, try to, so this is a very good way to collect, collect feedback. All right, so I see most of the people think it's Anna's boss. I like that. I like that. I love it. Okay, good. Now, most of the emails I have received start with, I have observed that we lost a big customer. Da, 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 da. Come to see me. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like a hood, yeah, but for serious people that want to appear serious. And and so remember what we talked in the quiz about the implicit blaming. So what does this mean that when you send an email to someone like, hey, this happened, whatever, blah, 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 sugar coating, come to see me. What does that imply to you? Imagine you are a new recruit, you're scared of everything and everybody. You just arrived to the company and this happens or this happens to your daughter or your son. What kind of email would you want to receive? And think about this implicit violence and implicit judgment already because what does it mean when when, hey, this happened, this is broken, come to see me. What does that imply? And if you ask anybody, like 90% of the people would say, yeah, it's like blaming Anna already, right? So when I asked you to write an email to Anna, maybe that was like a, a trick. Maybe the email should not be to Anna, it should be to Anna's boss or even to the CEO because what does it say about a company that it loses 10% of the income because they gave such an important task to a new employee? That hardly can be the new employee's fault. The new employee doesn't know anything about the company. How can we put the blame on the new employee? And when we send an email that says, hey, this happens, come to see me, the implication is that we are already made a judgment and blame the employee. Even though if you say, come to see me because we need to fix this, come to see me because, no. So maybe the email should be to Anna's boss, not to Anna, or to Anna's CEO. Yes, very good. You, you were one of the few that got it. Maybe, yes. And this is the difference between a great company and a typical company where they playing blame games, right? So this looks to me, and this is the observation part that we all got wrong. This looks to me like it's not an, it's not an issue of Anna. It's an issue of the company that they don't have a system to train the employees properly before giving them big responsibility. To me, it's, it looks like that. So we didn't observe well this problem. And because of that, we're sending an email that is not very good because the observation is wrong. So what would be a good observation here? To me, a good observation would, would look like, oh my God, we screw up. Uh, Anna, we are going to do a workshop to see how the management can be better at managing people. We'd like you to come as well with other employees 
to give feedback uh, or advice to the managers on how to do their job better next time. To me, that would be a good observation. Yes? And so now I'm going to teach you a tool that it's used by Toyota. Called five I. And we teach it in a course called Design Thinking. And here it is. Can you see it? Can you see my screen? Three, two, one. Okay, this is an, an iBook. Um, this is, let's see. Okay, it's. It's a Tununase. So I'm going to show you a very brief example. And the thing here, they, they use this method at Toyota. This is one of the reasons Toyota is such a good quality car company. Why? It's because when they have a problem, they try to solve the root cause of the problem. So in our case, we have Anna. So if we blame Anna, we solve the problem maybe for Anna, but the next, the next intern, the next new employee will have the same problem. So we can go to Anna and, and do something with her and the problem is solved for Anna, but we haven't solved the root cause problem, which is that the management doesn't train the new employees well, right? And here's another example, so you, you get the idea. So imagine that you have a headache, right? So you can ask the question, why do you have a headache? And the answer could be, because I have a cold. And a solution could be, take an aspirin. Fine. And this is what most car companies do when they have a problem. But now look at this other way to solve this problem. I have a headache. And you can ask, why? And you can answer, because I have a cold. And now you can answer, why did you catch the cold? And the answer could be, because yesterday I spent time in the cold. And you can ask again, why did you spend time in the cold yesterday? And it's because you can say, maybe, I didn't take my coat. You can ask, why? Because I didn't think it would be so cold. And you can ask again, why? And you can ask, because in the morning, I don't check the weather forecast. And now you have found the root cause of the problem. And the root cause is that this person doesn't check the weather forecast before going out of the house. Now that you have found the root cause, you can propose a permanent solution to this problem of the cold. Yes? 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 Which would be, for example, install a thermometer in the house or outside the house and check it before going out. Or tell Alexa to say the weather forecast every day in the morning or any other solution. If you look at these two ways of solving this problem, aspirin or buying the thermometer, the thermometer is more expensive than the aspirin, but the, the thermometer solves the problem forever. The aspirin solves the problem for this time. Sounds good? Does that make sense? So, so in this scenario of Anna, try to apply the five whys. And why is this called five whys method? It's because usually you will find the root cause after asking five times why. All right, so I will leave you for these vacations that we have upcoming now, right? Next week is the spring break, isn't it? Yes, so try to apply the five wise method to the scenario you have, make the any assumptions you want as long as they 